Yep, Bible Talk with Carolyn B. Back again, back at you on April 30th, 2024. And before I come on, I say I'm not going to grin and smile like I always do. You know, like, I don't know. There's some kind of bashfulness that I have, but I say it every time. I'm not going to smile and like Bible Talk with Carolyn B. And I never do it. Believe me, I don't know. I don't understand it either. But listen, while I was studying today, in Jeremiah chapter 11, God brought me specifically to these words. 11.13, no, 11.14. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up a cry or prayer for them, for I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble. Now at one point, that what God is saying there was meant for the Israelites and the, uh, for Israel and Judah. Because like when we were over there, all we ever could do and knew how to do was sin against God. That's why we're not there today, you guys. And no matter what anybody tells you that you're from Africa and Africans are from Africa, no, they're not. We are we are the Hebrews. We came from Israel and Judah. We're of the 12 tribes of Jacob. Okay, I don't care what even Africans tell you that's not in line with what I'm telling you. Because who told me was God himself. I didn't know these things. And I learned how to. When these things come in my head. I learned how to just believe them. Because God always cons confirms later. You know when I go ahead and believe him. And I think that's something God. That's unique in me. That God uses. Like I know when, when God downloads something. That's out of the ordinary. I know when it's true. And I know that I can repeat it. And I can be sure that God will confirm it. And that. You know it can't be changed. It is what it is. So I'm telling you. You're a neighbor. All you guys. Who are black. And who ancestors were slaves. You're an Hebrew. Alright. Make no mistake about it. It was told to me. It was told, I told you before, that you're an Hebrew. I told you that God told me on a, two different occasions, out of the blue, you're the seed of Abraham. You're the seed of Abraham. I told you, you guys are the seed of Abraham. Period. Okay? So, anyways, that was for you. And that's why you're not in Israel or Judah, which is... Jerusalem and in Israel altogether, you know, that's why you're not there But this time you guys check this out. This is why I'm here. I hope you lasted this long through that You know distraction This is for your enemies today Because God is gathering us all up and he's gonna take us back home He's gonna gather us from the four corners of the earth. You you've seen it written in the Bible Therefore pray not for these people, this people, the ones you're with, the ones who've done your ancestors wrong, the ones that the people are the, who are in Africa who've done their ancestors wrong, the people who are in England who done their ancestors wrong, pray not for them. I know you have prayed for them, and I know you've gotten along with them, and and you still get along with them. But God said, don't pray for them, and I'm telling you, this is a, only a confirmation today. Because God already told me not to have mercy on my enemies. That's been giving me such a hard time. God already told me before, don't have mercy on them. Don't have compassion on them. And I wonder, uh, you know, throughout the course of a couple of weeks, you know, since God told me that, did you mean that, God, not to have mercy on people? But he said, don't have mercy on them. They didn't have... And all down through those weeks after he downloads that, I realized he's saying it because they sure don't have mercy on me. And they don't have any on you. All right? You guys, pay attention. Believe God. Believe the word of God. 
Believe it. If you can't believe it, try it in your heart, which you should do in the first place. And pray about it. This is the true word of God coming from my mouth, which I would speak not if I am not authorized. You're in Hebrew, and God said, Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up a cry or prayer for them, for I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble. All right? Don't you think they deserve that? Listen to God, obey God, and uh, pray about Jeremiah 11 and 14. Then I went on. This is not for you guys. This is for your enemies. Listen. 11, Jeremiah eleven seventeen. For the Lord of hosts that planted you have pronounced evil against you for the evil of the house of Israel and for the house of Judah. Don't think of you yourself this time. Yours, you've been punished. Think of your enemies. They planted, God planted them in your life. Listen to me. Which they have done against themselves. The evil of the house that of them, which they have done unto themselves. You got to believe that I'm, you could pray about it, ask God about it. That this is not for you, this is for your enemies. But the name Israel and Judah are in the Bible, so what am I supposed to do? To provoke God to anger. Listen to me. This is for them. Now put your mind in the frame of this is for your enemies. For the Lord of hosts that planted you, them, that planted them, have pronounced evil against them. For the evil of the house of wherever you are, America for me, for you, England, for you, somewhere else, for you, something, somewhere else, all right? For the evil of their house, against, which they have done against themselves, you guys. <laughs> Praise God. To provoke God to anger in offering incense to Baal. They never, ever want to acknowledge God, the true God, their own creator, the own, the man, the one, the God who formed them in the belly of their mothers. They don't want to acknowledge him. So I'm going to read on because the rest of it is what I was reading today, too, and had, you know, an inkling, an inclination to come and share this. And then chapter 11, 18 goes, And the Lord hath given me, wait a minute, the title of this is The Certainty of Doom. 18, And the Lord hath given me knowledge of it, and he given you knowledge of it. I, please understand and believe. And I know it. Then thou showest me their doing. God is showing you all along their doings, haven't he? Since you've been saved, you have seen the doings of your enemies, even in the ones in your own home, right? 19, but I was like a lamb. This is so me, and this really caught my eye. But I was like a lamb or an ox that is brought to the slaughter, and I knew not that they had devised devices against me, saying... Let us destroy the tree which, with the fruit thereof, which is you and me. And let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his name may be no more remembered. Let me tell you guys, praise the Lord. That was verse 19, chapter 11, verse 19. If your enemies haven't tried to kill you, you haven't been watching. You're still the sheep or the ox brought to the slaughter. Because, you know, I knew I had enemies... All the whole time, all my life, right? And I knew people did me wrong, but I always loved them anyway. And But I kept my distance. I began to just leave them alone. But I didn't know they were trying to kill me. They wanted me dead. They didn't want me to live. Now, that's too bad. A human being don't want another human being to live. You ain't nothing but a human yourself. You can die today like you want me to die today. You know, I, 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 like God says, I, I'm a sheep and we innocent and not, I, I can't, my, in my innocence, I can't understand 
Why people don't think they can die instead of somebody else that they're trying to kill? For the life of me, I don't understand it. But I go on to chapter 11, verse 20. But, O Lord of hosts, that judges righteously, that triest the reins and the heart, let me see thy vengeance on them, for unto thee have I revealed my cause. Praise the Lord. Y'all, I've been, God, well, I ain't been praying for it. God just came to me and told I'm sorry, I have hiccups. God just came, that Satan go on in the name of Jesus. God just came to me and told me, remember when I told you in my word, your eyes will see the recompense of your enemies. Now this God said a couple months ago. So thank you, God. And in that couple of months, I've been tormented and beat on, and they're just trying, they trying to kill me, y'all, and stop me from progressing in every area of my life. But the Lord will not have it. And while they got me stuck here, like, they think they got me stuck because you can't stick nobody that God is want to change. So while they think they got me stuck here, guess what? Me being here is going to be the reason I see the recompense of my enemies. Praise the name of the Lord. I thought I'd bring you this today because it just rang out and you need to feel the same way. Because God is not doing anything to for me that he's not doing for all of you. I was born and created to drag you guys along with me if you ain't trying to come. But the rest of y'all that is, that want to come, come with me. Come with you. You are my charge. And I'm here to take you where you got to go. You've taken me and you continue to take me in your videos. You continue to teach me. You continue to to reinforce me. You continue to encourage me. And now I'm doing what I do. What I'm here to do. Praise the Lord. And those people you encourage, they, they sending you money. They sending you appreciation. They, they listening to you. They giving you likes and subscribing. This is what you deserve. You know? So, oh yeah. And at, at the me in the meantime, subscribe to me. Like my videos so that I can be encouraged to do more and even do them even better, you know, and I may become better at what I do because of your love. You know what I'm saying, y'all? So, Jeremiah 1121 goes on to say, Therefore, thus saith the Lord of the men of Anat about the men of Anatot that seek the your life. Saying, prophesy not in the name of the Lord. See, people not saying that out their mouths, they act in that way. They're showing that they don't want you to prophesy in the name of the Lord by what they do to you. Okay? They still do the same thing. So, prophes that say, prophesy not in the name of the Lord, that thou die not by our hand. Uh. And then 22 goes, therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, behold, I will punish them and I pu will punish them. The young men shall die by the sword, and their sons and their daughters shall die by the famine. But t these days we know it's a different kind of death today, right? And there shall be no remnant of them. Praise God. Praise your holy name. Because God, with them attacking us all the time, it's very difficult for us to do what we're supposed to do. And I thank you that at some point, in verse 23 of chapter 11 of the book of Jeremiah, you said, There shall be no remnant of them, for I will bring evil upon the men of Anathoth, even the year of their visitation. Everybody, all y'all must kind of feel like this year is the year of your enemy's visitation. Praise God, God, thank you. That you allowed me to come to you, to the people, with this message. Even though the words and the people are different, the words mean the same thing. God already told me, y'all, he's going to let my own eyes see the recompense of my enemies. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at the recompense this day. And I have been watching it, but the utter destruction awaits, uh, is in the future, in near future. Because 
What they have done to the children of God is inexcusable. And they thought that they were really doing something huge because God have not condemned them and killed them off. God doesn't work like that. He's not us and he doesn't think our way. His way, thoughts are above our thoughts and his ways are above our ways. God can wait. He can sacrifice people in the meantime. Because he need us not. But his own chosen. You are going to reap the evil that you put out there toward God's children. You will reap that same evil, but ten times more. And the wrath of God is no joke, you guys. I've been uh, the subject of the wrath of God at some point. And it's no joke. God ain't playing. God is terrible and he is mighty. And what he wants, he wants. And if you're not going to do it, somebody else will. And then he has absolutely no need for you. Right? Understand that God doesn't need you. You need him. You always did and you always will. How would... Somebody that created a planet for you that you destroy it. How would you not need the creator again to fix back what you're living? Maybe what I'm saying will touch the hearts of someone and get them to understand you are not the God of your life. You never have been and you never will be. There is only but one God and that's Jehovah. Yahweh, hallelujah, the mighty God, praise the Lord, the I am who I am, him, that's, that's God, so we all are only human, and for humans to destroy other humans is, it's beyond God's comprehension, if he hadn't sent Jesus Christ to explain what's, in, what's wrong with you, God wouldn't have any compassion on any of us, or any mercy, and he should, and he did, we wouldn't deserve it. So, it, with that being the case, you owe your life to God. You owe him your obedience. Because, you know, in the Garden of Eden before Adam and Eve sinned, they obeyed God. They didn't see anything wrong with it until Satan came, approached them with, well, showing them an angle that they never thought about. Which God allowed because, you know, God has a whole plan. And it's above your hand and mine. Alright? So, don't get mad at God. And I learned not to get angry with God. But your job is to obey God. He didn't create you or any other creation to disregard him, disrespect him, curse him, and disobey him. He didn't create anything that would not worship him. But he gave man his own free will. And the day you decided to follow your will, guess what? That's the day death came upon you. Because little by little, every day you die. And then God is so gracious and merciful and kind and compassionate that he allowed you to be redeemed through his son who suffered like you wouldn't want to suffer for you and for me. And every day, the what Jesus did, it, it's just too much to explain, too big, too huge for me to not ever praise him for it and thank him for it and be grateful for it. So, I believe in my heart that if this message reached your ears and your spirit and you are not saved... I believe you should be saved. I believe you should want salvation for yourself instead of what God's going to do to your enemies. Today, be saved in the name of Jesus Christ. And you can do so by praying the prayer of salvation and becoming a member of the body of Christ. Would you do it today? Would you not leave this earth with your enemies to be tormented? And destroyed and sent to hell and to the abyss would you not do that please today be saved 
close your eyes and we'll pray a prayer. Close them tight and think only of the salvation of Jesus Christ. Repeat after me. God, thank you that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins and to redeem us back to you. And God, we all know that Jesus had to die to save us because he took on our sin and was our sin and died as our sin. But when Jesus died, God, you raised him from the dead. And now, God, I believe in Jesus Christ, that he is your son, and I believe that your son died for me and you raised him from the dead. So, God, therefore, now I am saved. Thank you for saving me, God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, if you said that prayer, today you became a saved person. You became a member of the body of Christ. When that comes with a little duty, don't push yourself, don't rush yourself, but don't drag. Always read your Bible. Read a verse a day, or two or three verses a day, or a chapter a day, until you become proficient in reading and understanding God's Word. God's Word is true. It will save you from every abominable thing out there that would like to attack you and destroy you. But the, it can't because you've been saved by Jesus Christ. Whatever the devil can do to human beings, he did it to Jesus. And now, if you're in Jesus, he can't do any of it to you. He cannot destroy you. Read some verses in the Bible. Pray every day. Believe God loves you. Believe Jesus died for you. Believe it's all for a purpose that you can see and some purposes you can't see. Believe unto obedience to God. And be saved, you and your household, in Jesus' name. Thank you. And go to church too, you guys. And I mean, even though the devil's all off in the churches, maybe somebody needs to go to church and get him out. Because the devil done took a hold of a whole lot of people in them churches. But maybe this, this one person can make a difference in a church. And that could be you. Now, I don't mean to be doing this because they don't really make me no difference. It's just that I see it. And if I looked more while I was talking, I had been done, done this by the time I got to this part. But believe me, you much, you you way more important than my hair. It's just that I looked and saw it. But I don't, I just push it down. I don't think about it. I'm thinking about you. You are my main purpose. For living. God made me that. Because of God. And I'm being obedient to God. Because you mean everything. You mean a lot to him. And you mean everything to me. Because I'm you. You're me. We're human. We're in this world together. What would I do without you? In the name of Jesus. Right? So me doing this please. Don't take that as I'm. Uh, you know. <laughs> nah. But you know how the devil will make something look like something that's not. But you mean more to me than my hair, or my, a wig, or a car, or a home. You mean you are you are who I am. You you I feel, you know lots of times I be telling God they belong to me, and God does never refute it. But we belong to each other. That's why, <laughs> not because I'm here. You know, even for my purpose that I'm here is to you know get you guys back to your holy land but <laughs> sometimes i possess you i'm possessive of my people and i love you so much i do and there's nothing that can take the place of you and i don't want anything to take the place of you so thank you guys for listening and please be understanding that i love you dearly i mean without you i'm nobody without my people i'm nobody i i couldn't live in this world without you and i wouldn't want to and i i'd be asking god to take me home because I ain't living without my people. I can't do it. I don't want to. And I thank you guys for being there for me. By listening to this video. And it's like been 24 minutes. And it's almost 25. And I gotta go. And I don't want my videos to be too long. 
So pray for me, you guys. Like my video, subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. I I, I don't want to go, but I have to. So I love you. Remember it. Oh my God, remember I love you. And somebody really loves you on the earth. And God really loves you in heaven. Praise the name of Jesus, his son, who loves you even more. Well, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.